We're going to talk to someone whose uh, heart and outer heart, who's uh, just an angel. This is, I, I chose to marry this person for multiple, two to reasons. The moment I met her, the moment I met her, I knew she was my wife instantly. Um, and I knew that we were going to build. I knew we were going to do something together. Um, she has stretched me. She has taught me. She has uh, pounded me with her epic feminine in the best way and also the ways that cause resentment and beauty and more beauty to come out of it. Uh, everybody give a warm round of applause for my epic, sexy, intelligent, next level wife that is <laughs> Alexi Panos. Okay, y'all. I love that I pounded you into some good stuff. <laughs> that, that pounding did turn into four beautiful children. It did. As well. It did. It did. <laughs> Look, I got I got like a little thing here on my. Yep, that's our one youngest. Of them. Okay, so last guest of the day. Um, talk to me, and us. As I've I've started th with this question every time, and then I go off into crazyville. Yes, you do. Uh, um, yes. Um, talk to <laughs> us about what it is that you actually do for a living. Um, I reconnect people back to themselves. Mm. I bring them back to their full power, to the home inside of them, to the place that is their ultimate source of truth. And I do that through nervous system regulation, somatic work, and. Um, yeah, just attunement to the truth of you, the truth of the spirit, bigger you that gets to exist in this beautiful human body. Mm, love it. Yeah. And that manifests itself through what? Like you have a, a program called Awaken the Muse, where I work with women to help awaken that aliveness within them. The bridge oh. that I do with my hubby that we co-created together. Um, books, podcasts, all the things. Yep. So... Um, Talk to me and us about your understanding of abundance and money and a little backstory where it comes from. What do you, how do you believe? Because I know that I personally, again, I've told you every single person that's come on here, I learn from them, I grow from them, but the person who's had the biggest impact, when I met her, I didn't have anything. I, I hacked her consciousness. I, I watched how she was with money, with success, with business, and went, oh, well, I'm going to do what she's doing because she's figured out something that I haven't currently figured out. So can you help people understand how you view money and abundance and success? Yeah, so all of that, money, abundance, success, all energy. Hmm. Energy is a current that needs to flow. And so many of us are so tight and rigid in our bodies, so tight and rigid on how it needs to look that we're holding on to something. It's got to be this way. It's got to be a million dollars. It's got to be a million followers. Um, it's got to be the big business. It's got to be this man. We're so tight and holding on to the things that we want that we don't make room for what is to is, to flow, to do its life thing. And when we surrender, and we truly surrender to this idea that we've got a better plan than God does, that we've got a better plan than spirit does. When we surrender to that and we actually trust that we cannot fail, like we can't fail, like let that land. We actually trust that we cannot fail. And then everything is abundance. Mm. The fact that I have breath in my body, a heart that beats, blood that's warm and hot and moves, I am abundant because I have life and life gives me choice and choice gives me a playground to go, what now? Mm. How do I want to play? How do I want to do this dance called life? Because all things are possible if I say they are. are th all things are impossible if I say they are. Mm. But all things are just energy. So if I surrender to the energy that is omnipresent, that is always here and available to all of us, not one of us is special in that way. Not one of us is special in that way. Not one of us has access to more of this than any single one of you. We all are it. Mm. And because we are that same energy that created universes and stars and galaxies, we can go out and create whatever it is we want in this world. 
Okay, let me piggyback on that because most of the people in here, I'd say probably 60% of the people in this room right now are women. Yeah. What have you seen in working with women that has blocked them or stopped them from being in full ownership of their gifts and 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 like also not just doing it how a man does? Well, it's that. I think, you know, we're living in this um, amazing moment in time where we are all the byproduct of the feminist suit. And because of that, because of all the beautiful things that feminism has brought us, you know, equal rights and all these things that, yes, we should have, women and men have bo both kind of uh, lost our roles a bit. And women, I'll speak for myself in my own journey, but this is 100% of the women that I work with, we have placed all of our value in the more masculine traits. What can we produce? How much can we make? How much success can we have? How much can we be independent and not need anybody? And we go and we push and we push and we push and we push and society celebrates that. Oh my gosh, you're a boss, babe. You're crushing it. You're an independent woman. You're doing it. Yes. And so we keep on that hamster wheel. And it's not to say that we have to discount that because we don't. We can do all those things and build all those things, but we have placed our feminine superpowers on the shelf and said, you're not important anymore. Mm. And so what happens is our innate gift of surrender, of connection to spirit, of having a womb, of being the void that can receive wisdom from up here and then create life, whether that's a human life or a book life or a product life or any type of life, that is our masterful gift. And when we can combine both of those things, our healthy masculine, our healthy feminine, we become unstoppable. And most women are so stuck in this hypervigilant shadow masculine state that they're just tight mm. and they don't have that life force energy flowing through them, which allows all of life to create abundance, money, magic, love, intimacy, all the things. Let's go. This is, and that's my boo right there. Hey, <laughs> that's my boo right there. So, okay. Um, so I'm a woman and I'm starting to recognize that there are some shadow masculine aspects of me that are in the way. Um, I've been taught to never trust a man. I've been taught that, you know, never depend on anyone. Where do I even start? Where do I go? And how does that translate into still actually making money and having a business or whatever the case may be? Yeah. So all of it comes down to alignment. And the biggest thing is, is you can feel when you're out of alignment, if you're burnt out, exhausted, resentful, frustrated, if there's any like angry, rigid, tight in the body, sick all the time, if there's any of these signals, it's a signal that you're out of alignment. It's the smoke alarm going off in your house, beeping. And most of us are just going, Hey, let me take out the batteries. Cause it's annoying. Meanwhile, there's a fire in your house that the smoke alarm is pointing to. And we're going, screw the fire, just get rid of the noise. And we get rid of the noise by distracting ourselves, by watching Netflix, by thinking, oh, maybe if I lose 10 pounds or look younger or get a new partner or buy this new dress or get this new car, well, then I'll feel better. But the fire in your house is your nervous system. The fire in your house is your nervous system going, hey, we are out of alignment with the pace of life that actually feels good, that we can actually maintain. So the first thing I always say is like, check in with your smoke alarm. Like, where are the alarms going off in your house? For some of you, it's your workhouse and your workhouse is like screaming fire. For some of you, it's your relationship. You know, we went through a period where our smoke alarm was like blaring in our relationship and we had to take a hard look. Where is the fucking fire? And it's not that it's bad and you have to get rid of it, but you have to start approaching things with more consciousness and intention. And that's the thing, the way we get out of these survival loops and these patterns where we just feel stuck and we keep going, we have to pull all the way back and go, what's actually here? And so that's the biggest thing. Where are the smoke alarms in your life? It might be in your relationships, it might be in work, it might be with your health, but you gotta get honest about that first and then really ask yourself, if all things were perfect, if I felt fully taken care of and fully supported and fully abundant in this area, how would I move? What would be different? And then start to move in that way. Mm. Okay. Let's say they have a partner right now. Mm -hmm. Smoke alarms are going off. All the stuff is happening. And that partner is a masculine partner in a masculine body 
who's still struggling himself as well, but he's mm -hmm. trying to support, he's trying to do the thing. What would you say to a, a woman who's has all that coming up and has a partner like that? So the first thing is to stop looking at them and going, you're the problem. And I know this is hard because we can find all the evidence to why they are, okay? And they very much may have problems and issues that they gotta deal with on their terms, but that's their business. Let them have their business. We're gonna stay in our business. Our business is going, okay, I'm gonna stop doing this. You're the problem. You can't communicate. You can't, you can't, you're not, you're not. And I'm gonna go, what am I tolerating? Where am I over-functioning? Where am I over giving? Where am I betraying myself and dropping myself left and right to try and please you, to maintain your love and affection, to try and keep the peace? Where are my needs centered in this conversation? Do they even exist? Do I even know what they are? That is a huge piece. Relational dynamics are such, it's such a tricky thing that nobody gets out of. And it's the best workshop you could ever attend is a committed relationship. Facts. And when you approach the relationship from not from an exchange of like, hey, I'll love you if you love me. I'll love you in this way as long as you love me in this way. And if you don't, then screw you, I'm out. Mm. But if we approach it from, hey, we're going to love each other and it is going to be an opportunity for us to come to the most authentic, aligned, expressed version of ourselves. And oh, it's going to be painful sometimes. But do you want to do that dance together? Mm. Because if so, this person is going to be the perfect mirror, the perfect mirror for you. Okay. Let me jump in. This is the last question. Um, what would you say to a woman who, or, or what is your take on aliveness and pleasure? Yeah. And how does that pertain to and connect to abundance? Okay. So a lot of people put pleasure on the shelf of like, oh, it's a nice to have. And I'm not just talking like sexual pleasure. I'm talking like going out and doing things that feel frivolous, like going for a walk around the lake or sitting in the sun for 30 minutes. Anything that for me, it's like reading a book. I love reading books, right? Anything that lights your soul up and just feels like oh, an exhale. Pleasure is actually one of the most productive things we can do because it puts our spirit in alignment with our 3D body. Spirit goes, oh, I'm experiencing what it means to be alive. That. Life, life force. Oh my gosh, I'm alive. Look at this tree. Oh my gosh, I'm alive. Feel the sun on my face. Oh my gosh, I'm alive. Feel this amazing sexual encounter I'm in. Whatever it is, that aliveness is the current of life. Money is currency. So if we want more currency, we have to be tuned in and tapped into and allow the flow of the current of life. And mm -hmm. most of us are so far from that because we're stuck in that loop of, I got to produce, I got to stay on it. We're in survival mode. And it doesn't discount that some of you may need to get out of hard situations, but even within the hard situations, can you find the aliveness? Mm -hmm. Can you find the magic? Can you find the abundance? Can you find that sun on your face and drink it in and go, oh, fuck, I am alive. Mm -hmm. Yes. That pleasure, even if it's fleeting, even if it's two seconds long, that is your tuning fork to the vibration of the universe. Everything is alive. Everything is dancing. The question is, are you allowing yourself to be moved by the music of life? Most people are not. Most people hear the music and they're like, oh, not now. I'm busy. And we're tight around our busyness and what we have to do. And we miss that there's a symphony playing. Let's fucking go. And it's fucking magic. Oh, she is eating right now. She <laughs> is eating your faces right now. Tell me that didn't land and hit. Tell me it didn't land and hit. That's all, men and women in this room. Oh, she just went to church on you. Okay, so hear, hear this. First of all, thank you. I love you. I love you. I'm madly in love with you. Same. I, <laughs> I'm completely enraptured in, in, in your juiciness if you aren't following my wife just at alexi panos it should be smiles or davis but modern <laughs> modern girl you know what I'm saying? i just no. want to change all my bank account information and all the things you no. know it's just a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> at alexi panos follow her she's gonna go get our kids right now and then i'm gonna get the other one when i'm done so this is this is the victory lap Alexi, thank you so much. Everybody just extend your hands and send some love so she feels it and knows that she just ate like on every level. 
Um, and just so you know, anybody who's in Spiritual Millionaire Academy is also, you basically get Alexi too. Um, Bonus. Yeah. So <laughs> there's that too. Um, final words. Hmm. You already won. <sighs> Whatever it is that you think you're lacking in your life, I invite you to look again. You already won. You're already there. You already made it. You're living the fucking dream.